Here on the Adapt-A-Looks channel, we've shot a lot of plants and flowers over the years, but we've never shot any crops. Today I'm going to be shooting wheat, which is actually a really uh, unique type of plant, and it's got a lot of interesting details on it. So I'm going to be getting up close and personal with some interesting lighting and maybe some colours. I'm going to go and get started, so I'll see you in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and today we are shooting wheat. Uh, you may or may not know that we're actually based in Lincolnshire in the UK, which is a pretty big cereal farming hub of England, uh, which means that there's a lot of crops lying around. Uh, I wanted to go and grab some wheat uh, just before harvest time. It's actually, uh, well, there is still a little bit of green left in here, uh, but it's almost dried out. It's almost time to be harvested, so I have been to grab a few before they all get uh, eaten up by the combine harvester. Um, there's a lot of detail in these. I can already see with my uh, naked eye that uh, this is going to be a really interesting subject. Uh, so I'm going to quite simply go and grab my camera, grab my lighting and uh, get up close to see what we can do with our wheat. So the first order of business today is actually to uh, chop off the tops of my wheat. All of this is a little bit extra and it's only going to get in the way. So I've got some nice level pieces of wheat here, which will be nice and easy to handle and put into a clamp. Uh, I don't actually know what the proper term is for a single piece of wheat. Um, so if you're a farmer, uh, let me know down in the comments what a single piece of wheat is supposed to be called. Despite living in the country most of my life, uh, I don't actually know these things, so uh, let me know if you do. Um, I'm going to be putting uh, these little pieces down into a clamp. I'll probably just start with uh, a single piece just to start getting a feel for the subject. I'm not going to be doing any focus stacking today, no tripods, nothing fancy. I'm simply going to be going freehand with my Sony a7 III and my 100mm uh, f2.8 Tekina macro lens. Uh, I'm going to be moving in quite close and getting some wider shots as well, so this lens is absolutely perfect for that range of movement. With my first piece of wheat nicely situated, uh, just held in a soldering clamp, it gives me the opportunity to really take a look at this uh, interesting subject. And we've got a couple of uh, really interesting features here in the patterns that are created. Uh, because nature tends to repeat itself, we have uh, lots of little pieces jutting out and those patterns repeat themselves not only on uh, this piece of wheat but also on all of the others so I think it's going to be really interesting when we get multiple pieces together uh, to look at those patterns forming but for now I'm just going to focus on uh, getting some uh, interesting lighting onto this piece. The way that I'm going to do that is by using the Adapt Look Studio. So I have my uh, control pod here, which uh, provides all of the power and control for our lighting arms. And it's sat here on a mini tripod so that I can uh, place it down onto my coffee table. The, uh, the light is actually provided by the lighting arm. So this is a flexible uh, LED light that I can move around and position wherever I'd like it to be, pointing at my piece of wheat. The real magic starts to come in when we start playing with colour though. So I can actually add colour filters to the ends of my arms. They just magnetise on there. And this piece of uh, wheat is now looking a little bit more alive with this green colour filter. So instantly I've changed the vibe of how this uh, quite bland piece of wheat is looking. I can play around with different colours like oranges and reds to create sunsets and evening style lighting on my piece of wheat, but I can also play around with cooler colours like blues to make it look like a cool morning. The green's really good at making it come back to life again, and pinks make a nice sort of sunsetty shade as well. So there's a lot of different colours to play around with and experiment with on this lovely piece of wheat. I'm going to take some initial shots just of my single piece here, and then we can take a look at what they look like all together. As I'm investigating this wheat even more, um, I'm finding that those repeating patterns are not only repeating on individual pieces, 
but on all of the pieces. You can see that uh, these two pieces next to each other have the same patterns uh, repeating um, between them, which is really, really interesting when you place lots of them down together, as I've just been doing. Uh, you can use that colored lighting, that uh, interesting angle of lighting to really obscure what this subject is. And if you get close enough, you can really start getting it into the abstract. Uh, I really enjoy that. It almost looks sort of uh, like alien caterpillars or dragon scales or something like that when you get up close. Uh, obviously you have to stretch your imagination a little bit, but that's why we do this. Um, I'm certainly enjoying um, trying to make this wheat look like something a little bit more extravagant and less run of the mill than your everyday crop. Something that I do quite often, but I don't show uh, on the videos all that often because it's usually done behind the scenes when I'm setting up, is changing the brightness levels of all of these lighting arms. So not only do we have them flexible and positionable exactly where we want them for that interesting lighting on our wheat, we can also change the brightness uh, levels of each of these individual arms um, in very small increments. We can do this using the Bluetooth app, which connects to the control pod, or we can just use the manual buttons on top. So to do this, all I'm going to do is press this top button and it's going to select an arm. So you can see that blue arm there is now pulsing. I don't want to select that one. So let's have a look at this red one. I want to bring this down a little bit. So I'm just going to hold that minus button button on the back of the pod uh, to about there. And then I can select the green arm. I want to bring this one up a little bit, so I'm going to hold the plus button on this side of the pod until it starts pulsing, and then we know we're at maximum. If I just leave that now, it's going to save those new brightness settings. So this uh, this white arm just here with the red filter has got a lot dimmer and the green one is now a lot brighter. It's changed the balance of the light on our wheat, which is very, very handy for something like this, where we're experimenting with colors and lights coming from different directions. Wheat is a pretty common thing to find around, especially in the countryside, but I don't see it being used that often for macro photography and I see it being uh, photographed even less often in a controlled environment, playing around with lighting and different colors. Uh, but it's been a, a few months of very experimental uh, technique focused tutorials here on the channel. So I really wanted to get back to a little bit of nature, get a nice straightforward subject out and just play around with a little bit of lighting and a little bit of color. I hope you've enjoyed following along with this shoot as much as I've enjoyed uh, getting back to the bare bones basics of the Adapts Look Studio with those flexible lighting arms to get light into the nooks and crannies of the wheat. And of course, the color which really enhances what was quite a bland subject and takes it to uh, a different level, a bit more abstract and uh, a little bit more eye catching. Let me know down in the comments if you do know the answer to that question that I posed at the start. What is the uh, the name for a single piece of wheat? Also, let me know if you've shot anything like this before, like uh, barley or maybe some other crops. Um, and if you've enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button. Subscribe for more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration in the future. But for now, that's all I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.